Hello, welcome back. I'm EVM and this is all about used electric vehicles and what they're going for on the used market. Normally, because I've done this video every year for the past four or five years, I would start off at a price point, the cheapest ones available, and then work his way up from there. And although I'll be doing something similar in this, it's not going to be quite as, oh, that's good value, or if I was spending this amount of money, I would maybe look at this car. It's, you know, the, the, the used market is so crackers right now. I mean, it's, it's off the charts bonkers that I don't consider many out there decent value or even good value anymore. I mean, obviously, it's worth what it's worth. People are paying what they're going for, so clearly it must be worth that. But considering what they used to be just a year ago, considering that they have to, at some point in the future, stabilise, if not come back down again, I'm not sure right now is a brilliant time to buy a used electric vehicle. Unfortunately, it's not a great time to buy a new one either. But I'll come to that in a minute. Let's, uh, well, let's cue the intro and then get on with what I think will be a slightly depressing video if you're looking for a used EV. At the moment, the new car market is a bit crackers by itself. Everything has got such a long lead time. You're looking at six to 18 months for most EVs on the market, most new ones, factory orders. There are occasional anomalies. You know, there are a couple out there where you can get them sooner, but for the majority of them, including Tesla, you're gonna be looking at potentially around a year's wait. So what happens essentially is that someone either goes, I don't want to wait that long or I can't, you know, if your car gets written off, for example, and you need something now, you then think, well, I'm gonna to have to look at the used market. So there are more people dipping into the used market than ever before. And even though there are more EVs on the, the UK market, as it were, it's just not enough to cope with the sheer demand that is out there when it comes to people wanting one. So we've got high demand, low supply, and it, you know, it's essentially like you've got a low birth rate and a normal death rate. We're just getting smaller and smaller in terms of the population. The amount of cars out there is just getting smaller and smaller. And when things get, you know, supply and demand issues, should we say, when they get rarer, the price goes up. So that's essentially what we're in at the moment. I honestly do not see this changing any time soon. I mean, I'm no expert in this field, I'll freely admit that, but from what I've seen, from the people I've spoken to, some of whom are definitely experts in this field, we're looking at two to three years as a minimum before the used market will even start to stabilise. You need a flood of new cars to come on, which will then eventually end up on the used market to essentially dilute it a bit. You want a lot more cars on the market than people are wanting to buy to get the price down. That is years away. But... That's where we're at at the moment. So let's see what is on the market if you are looking for a used electric vehicle. And as I said before, it's not gonna be great. In fact, let me start with essentially, let me go right to the end of what I did in a video back in 2020, January, so nearly 18 months ago. This is a Renault Zoe, it's 2013. And if I remember correctly, there were a lot of 2014 models around the same sort of price. So we're looking at a Renault Zoe, from let's say 2014 for six thousand pounds battery lease of course now if you want that same car the cheapest i can find the cheapest one on auto trader right now is seven thousand two hundred and fifty and that's on its own most are starting at seven and a half thousand pounds so essentially a year ago it was five now it's seven and a half for the same car that's that much older so from that clip i showed you from the video from what, two and a half years ago, was it? 2020, January 2020. It's gone up by 1,500 pounds. From last year, it's gone up practically 50%. Telling somebody that EVs are easy to get into, they're, they're, they're affordable, is, oh, well, it's impossible. How can you say to someone, the cheapest EV that'll do what, 60, 70 miles in the real world is seven and a half thousand pounds and then you've got the battery lease on top of it. So that for me is the entry level, the, the only ones I would probably consider going for. However, if you do have a smaller budget than that, Nissan Leafs do seem to start at about five and a half thousand pounds. But 
these three, for example, that I looked at, I haven't looked at the bottom one, but the top two, I've looked at the pictures and, <clears throat> excuse me, this one, for example, it's a 2011 one, so that's 11 years old. This is a 2012, 10 years old now. They're the very first examples of a leaf. They're basically the, the early generation stuff. So the battery uh, lifespan, if you will, isn't anywhere near what it is today. And I don't think these have been treated very well at all. I mean, this one, one of these, I can't remember which one it is, I think it's this one, I think has six bars left. Half of its battery capacity is gone. That's probably got a 30, 40 mile real world range. And they're still going for five and a half thousand pounds. It's, it's crazy. And I know a car is a car. It will still work and drive as it did before. It's just the range that's not as good. I personally wouldn't wouldn't look at them. They've clearly been abused, maybe left with a low state of battery for ages. I'm not sure. Little tip though, if you are looking at a Nissan Leaf, go for the 30 kilowatt hour version rather than the 24, if you can afford it. The 24 came with a five year warranty on the battery. The 30 kilowatt hour came with an eight year warranty on the battery. 9,000 pounds for the cheapest one, that's by itself. So you're looking at nearly 10 grand for the cheapest 2016 Nissan Leaf 30 kilowatt hour. Now, let me go back to the Renault Zoe because very good car, lots of people like them. Uh, I feel as if I could step it up to the 40 kilowatt hour version now. So they do a bigger battery version <clears throat> and this would genuinely give you 200 miles in the real world in summer, probably 150, 140 maybe, depending on how you drive in winter. But it's it's got good range by today's standards. You're still, with a battery lease, looking at around 14 grand upwards. 14,000 pounds. I'm sure I remember them being at about 11 and a half a year or so back. So they're a year older and they've gone up again, several thousand pounds. So now let's flick to um, the, well, I, I, it needs mentioning because they are around the 6,000 pound bracket, maybe five and a half if you look hard enough. The uh, Mitsubishi iMeve or the Peugeot e Ion or the Citroen C0, they're basically the same car, just different kind of clones of each other. You'll only get 50, 60 miles out of it and these are 61, maybe 62 reg, so basically 2011, 2012. But if you just need something extremely basic, short range, do the shops, a commuter vehicle, something to that, you know, something like that, these are very good. I mean, the little, the four seaters, they're definitely a town car, and for five and a half, call it six thousand pounds, probably won't you know, want to get a, a well looked after example. They have decent value. It's just that range. That will put people off, but it will also suit people as well. Now, uh, the Kia Soul. So I'm doing this car by car rather than by price. <clears throat> the original Kia Soul, the Mark 1, 27 kilowatt hour battery, that's usable. So you'd probably get about another five to 10 miles more out of that than you would the Nissan Leaf, the 30 Leaf. Because Nissan say total capacity, not usable. These, again, very well respected, Every owner I speak to said it's brilliant. I reckon you'll get 100 and, well today, because you know, they are getting on a bit, 110, 115 miles, real world. Again, it depends how you drive uh, and uh, time of year and whatnot. But these are starting at 14,000 pounds. This one here, granted it's a 2018, it's only four years old, 17.7. And that's for a car with a 27 kilowatt hour battery in it. Moving on to something which even today looks brilliant. I would own at least a similar model to this. It's the BMW i3. Now these are the cheapest ones you can find. Uh, so we're looking at 2014 models. Smallest battery that they come with and well, you probably get what, 60, 70 miles out of it, something like that. But it's, a, it's look at it, it's a BMW i3. It's, it's cool even by today. It's very fast. I mean, really fast off the line, 170 brake horsepower. It, it, it's, it's as quick to 30, 40 miles per hour as a BMW M3. I mean, it really is rapid. They're starting at 12 grand upwards. Next up, a car which is fantastic fun, great old school driving, uh, even the previous version. So this is the Volkswagen E-Up. However, this is the one with the 18 and 19 kilowatt hour battery, I think it is. So it's range, again, not brilliant. You're looking at 60, 70 miles, I reckon, ish, in the real world. 
So these are about seven years old, seven, eight years old, but they're still going for 14,000 pounds. I think 12 months ago, I could have bought a brand new one of them from somewhere like Drive the Deal on a good discount for about 18,000 pound brand new. And that's the bigger battery version. This is a smaller battery version and they're starting at 13 and a half, 15 that for a 2015 one. Um, now, another relatively rare car, extremely efficient car, the Hyundai Ionic, or Ionic, I always get it wrong. These are just, again, I, 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 can't, I can't see where the prices are coming from, but again, they are what they are. They're starting at 20,000 pounds. That's the 2019 one, 2018 one, 2018 again. So this is a, this is a smaller battery version, because they did a, a bigger one, or do a bigger version. Uh, again, very efficient, a lot more efficient than other cars in its class. Now, I mentioned the E-Up earlier, go for the bigger battery version. This is the only thing I've found in this entire video that I would seriously consider reasonable value. The Skoda Citigo. It's essentially identical to a Volkswagen E-Up and the um, Seat Me. They're just clones, they're, they're basically the same car, just one's from Skoda, one's from Volkswagen and so forth. Now that, with its bigger battery, will do around 140 odd miles. In the real world, it's chuckable, it's quick enough, off the mark especially. It's just really good fun. Old school fun. £18,250 for a two year old one. They don't sell the Citigo anymore. They stopped making it after oh, about six months or maybe a year. So that's got to be one of the rarest cars in the UK. They're still making the E up, but you're looking at a 15, 16 months lead time to order a new one, minimum. Very few seem to remember the City Go or even realize it was ever an electric version of it. I think it gets missed. If that was an E-Up, it'd be 22 grand for the same age, same battery size. It's the same car, but it's cheaper. So that's the only one I would consider good value. It's one I would consider replacing my Mini with, the petrol Mini, although now I've mentioned that, they're probably all going to disappear and go up in price now. Now, I shouldn't have said anything really, should I? Yeah. Now on to something which is very common. I've had two of these in the previous version, previous shape. The Nissan Leaf. This is the 40 kilowatt hour version. <clears throat> and again, starting at, well, 18 and a half, 19,000 pounds. That's the 2018 one, that's 2018. 40, 50,000 miles each. 20,000 pounds for that 2018 with 31,000 miles. For a family size electric vehicle that'll do 120 miles, say, maybe 130 in the real world, 18 and a, and a bit grand. So obviously it's a lot bigger than, you know, the e up or something like that. So needs must, I suppose. But yeah, these, these are all, all, all the prices I'm mentioning here are all starting from. I'm not saying that you're going to get a leaf for 18 grand, I'm saying that's where they begin. Ow. A car I very highly rate, almost bought, and now I've seen the prices, kind of wish I had have done, the Volkswagen E Golf. These are all the bigger battery versions, the uh, 35, 36 kilowatt hour. You get, uh, again, about 100, 115 to 125 miles of rear wheel range, but it's just a Golf. It's literally just a Golf. 19 and a half grand, well, 19 grand for that one. That's a 2019 68 reg with nearly 50,000 miles on it. So 19 and a half, 22,000 miles on it. I remember being able to order one of those for about ooh, 21 grand. They were really trying to get rid of them. 21,000 pounds, brand new, granted with no options, for something which four years later is going for 19 and a half. Which takes me to a car I would seriously, and ah, seriously considering, as is Harry, on the used market, Again, they are what they are, but it's the BMW i3S. The i3 for me, fantastic car, quick, very skittish, thin tires, tall. It, it felt like it was gonna fall over when you pushed it too much. It's not, it's actually quite good at handling. It just didn't, it's no Mini, for example. I have a Mini Cooper S, I love it. I would want something similar, don't do a lot of miles. And the i3S, for me, it sort of solves that problem a little bit. You know, it's lowered, it's got a wider track. The Schnitzer kit would widen that and lower it even more. So I'd probably have to budget that on it. But I think 
you know, in this color that, or, or black, it just looks fantastic. It looks like a hot hatch. It's fast, it ticks lots of boxes. It's just, unfortunately, it starts at 22, 23,000 pounds for the cheapest i3s. They're all range extenders as well, which is a hybrid, of course. I think it's 140 quid in um, road tax. That wouldn't bother me, to be honest. But some of them, if you buy it at the wrong time because of the luxury car tax that was in for a little bit, I've seen these go in for five, 600 pounds a year for car tax because of the luxury premium thing that you have for, for the first five or six years of its life. So be careful which one you do look at, make sure it is 140 pounds uh, in terms of uh, its, its road tax. You don't want a five, 600 pound surprise. The 50 kilowatt hour version of the Renault Zoe. Slight facelift, newer technology. I know there's a bit with the airbag at the moment, but when these came out new, that wasn't a thing. They were still five star in cap and now they're not. They, they, they shouldn't have done what they've done, but that's another story. The 50 kilowatt hours hour, you will get 170 to 220 miles of real world range. Again, depending on time of year. It's a fantastic little EV. I don't think anybody would dislike it, you know, given the expectation or what you would have. They're starting at £21,000. No battery rental on that one. It's all the cars. So it's, you know, that's it. £21,000. And they're 2020s. In fact, yeah, they're all 2020. So two years old-ish. Maybe 18 months. Make sure it comes with rapid charging. I don't know why they make, made that in the beginning anyway. An option. It's crackers. Um, so, yeah, that's the only thing I would say about these. Make sure it has rapid charging. So, 21 grand for a car that'll do around 200 miles in the real world. Not bad. It's just, it is a small car. Well, as I said, Clio Fiesta size, so not small. You'd manage with a family, but it's just been around a long time. It's dated, like the Nissan Leaf. Now, I thought I'd include this, even though it's one I probably wouldn't go for personally. It's the Mini Electric. Again, two years old, but these are the level one. So it's the entry level, very few options on them. And the Mini without any options, it, it, it looks basic inside. But again, it's the same car, same sort of performance levels as your, your BMW i3. Recently took one out and it was great fun. For £24,000, you can get one. Only 110, 115 miles, that's its kill its eel. Uh, you're looking at 27, £28,000 for a brand new one. Now, this is a car which I think is one of the best value cars on the market, on the new car market. My brother has one, he's just replacing it in the next few months with the facelift version. But this is the 44.5 kilowatt hour MG ZS. Now, I remember seeing these for £17,500 about a year ago on the used market. So they're only about a year old by then. These are all, again, two years old, 2020. And they're starting at £20,000, £300. £20,000. Let's say £20,500 and upwards for a two year old MG ZS. And for as good as they are, for as good value as they are, that's, that's insane, quite frankly. But it just shows how in demand any electric vehicle is. Onto something which I, I thought I'd put out just because it's the car I own right now. I have a two year old. Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. No options, in white, and it cost me, I think it was £40,500 just over two years ago. I could sell that car that I paid just over forty grand for for £38,500. The cheapest one is thirty-eight grand, and that's done more miles than mine. The equivalent one, 2020, in white, again, no options, £38,500. That one... Forty and a half thousand pounds. In theory, I might be able to get my money back twenty odd thousand miles and two years after I bought it. Especially considering that a new one is now forty six thousand pounds, so it's gone up a lot as new cars have. And if you order a brand new Model Three Standard Range Plus now with in white the base spec basically without any extra alloy wheels or anything that they're trying to push, it won't arrive until next May. It's a year to get a Tesla, and they're usually very, very good on the supply chain. Now, this is something which I've always classed as a very, very good electric vehicle. It's the Kia e-Nero. 
This is the first edition. So these are 2019, three years old. They went, if you pre-ordered one, I think it was 31, 32,000 pounds. You know, bear in mind that the, the EV grant was obviously a lot bigger back then. So that has, a, that has an effect. That's 31 and a half, that's 32, that's 34. Although that's a four plus, so that's not first edition. So you're looking at 31 to 32,000 pounds. So if you've got a Kia e-Nero first edition and you ordered it, you know, at, at launch, you're gonna get your money back three years later. I'm not sure that's worth it though, because for 35,000 pounds, you can get a brand new one, the facelift one, although it would be the two spec. It goes two, three, four, essentially now. So it wouldn't be as well spec as that, but I think I'd pay the extra three grand to get a brand new e Nero. That's it. That's all of the cars I've gone through. And essentially, if I'd have gone through any other manufacturer or make or model, it's the same story. Basically, I'd about anywhere from 20% to 40% on what it was a year ago. You're looking at that as the price. New car prices, again, they've gone up. Um, or rather the discounts have evaporated. So let me give you an example I've used before. I know someone who bought two Volkswagen ID3s, company vehicles. I think it was about 24,000 pound each. Base, base spec, you know, there were no options. Um, now, from the same place, drive the deal, so it's a very good offer. There were lots on the market at the time. They didn't want to pre-register them, so there were some very good deals going on. The same car, same make, model, everything from the same place, again, drive the deal, is no longer £24,000 as it was last May, a year ago, £33,000. That's still below the list price, but that car, in terms of what you could buy it for, has gone up ten grand, mainly because it's 15, 16 months before you're going to get it as a minimum. So, of course, who's going to discount a car that, they can't sell you. Same story with Tesla, of course. I paid 40 and a half. It's now 46 for the same car. So that's obviously had an effect on the used market. And it's, as I've been, I'm talking to people who are fully charged about this. And it is a perfect storm of resource shortages, you know, like chips and um, prices of transportation and various other stuff going up. Demand skyrocketing for EVs many other things all coming together for this as i said the perfect storm to create a bonkers used market which is all only going to hurt ev adoption if you're looking at replacing your car let's say my model 3 it's two years old let's imagine i'm doing the three-year thing you know when you, your pcp runs out and you think i'll you know, i'll get another new car i'd have to order that now when it's two years old a year before the three years comes up just to make sure that the new one was around or arrived when the three year was up ish. It is the world we're living in right now. You know, there are bigger things going on. This is obviously you know, first world problems, but in terms of EV um, adoption, this is gonna hurt it. This is gonna be an issue. This is going to cause people financial problems to the point where they're gonna have to just stick with their petrol or diesel car. Enough about this value. Let's just uh, end it there before I use the word bonkers for the 15,000th time. Um, thank you for watching. I wish there were better news, but that is it. Uh, if you've got any comments, if you've recently bought a used one, if you've got any stories about prices going up or a dealer saying, well, actually, no, it's not this much, it's this much now, anything like that, stick it in the comments, I'd love to know. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.